Stewardship is the right word. I'm not actually sure who, uh, if I wrote that title or not. It was some time ago I was invited to come here, and uh, it appeared as the title of my my talk. And uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I would have coined it if it wasn't uh, coined by me. But I think it's enormously important that we contemplate what the word is. I've been at this game, like, I know I'm a very fresh-faced looking fellow, but I've been at it about 20 years. So my first job I took in St. John's, Newfoundland in 1994, and I got dumped right into this issue very quickly, and I got very famous in my own mind very quickly. Newfoundland's a small place, right? So I was on the TV all the time, and that was, you know, important. And but I'm mean, at this, I started out in 94, 95, and being the sort of canary in a coal mine kind of thing, going, yeah, we've got to do something about all this bad antibiotic use. This, this is going to be terrible. And uh, the rooms that I talked to were very small and had all the people that already agreed with me in them. And uh, over, over the years, I've gotten to, the rooms get bigger, the people get more august, the, 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 the kinds of people... Are, are much closer to being able to change the story. Uh, I'm now actually paid to be an antimicrobial steward. I'm one of the only people in Canada that's my job. I'm a physician. We get paid lots of money in Canada, too. I'm paid one half of my time to be the antimicrobial steward for the 780,000 unsuspecting people on Vancouver Island. So it's a huge, huge change, and it's been changing very quickly. The, the slope of the change curve is on the acceleration, and it's been enormously validating for me. And to be able to stand up in front of a bunch of veterinarians in Atlanta, Georgia, when I'm working in British Columbia, is just, it's so cool for me. This is the fun part of what I get to do. The stuff I'm doing at home at the moment, you guys have been, you know, we've been talking about it. It's hard. It's really hard to figure out who the people are that help make the decisions, to move some money around, right? Moving money around is like, oh, my God. I don't do much doctoring. I do a fair bit of doctoring on the 50 other percent time. But when I'm doing stewardship stuff, it ain't doctoring for the most part. It's leading, I hope. It's leading, and that's what I'm going to tell you guys today is what, why you're here and what... So when my kids found out that this was 20 minutes. I had to go talk for 20 minutes in Atlanta. They just laughed. We got 20 minutes? Jesus. 20 minutes. They don't know you. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, that's right. But anyway, it, it was quite cool because I do a lot of this, and I hadn't had to do a 20-minute talk. I don't know when I had to do a 20-minute talk. So then I had to go, what the hell am I going to tell a bunch of veterinarians and... and, and uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, about antibiotic stewardship that would, make any, would mean anything. So the only thing I can talk to you about, I think, in 20 minutes, is principles. It's the principles of how we get anything done. It doesn't, it, this won't necessarily apply to only, uh, or it won't apply to only antimicrobial stewardship. It'll apply to getting anything done, right? So we're at the place now that we're looking for, everybody's looking for leaders. And the leaders, I hope, a lot of them are in the room. And so when we are, get ourselves into a place where we're leading, we've got to put our different hats on. When we're veterinarians, we've got to think a different way. When we're doctors, we've got to think a different way. When we are, we've got we to gotta put our leadership hats on, which means what is a leader? And what, what do you do as a leader, right? So the first thing, principle, is this one. I... I wholeheartedly believe this. This has nothing to do with blame. Nothing at all. It has nothing to do with anybody being bad. Right? It's, nobody did anything that was overtly bad. I tell my kids all the time, right? If it's not malicious, if people aren't doing it specifically to be bad, it is what it is. It is. And all the forces that got to where we are, they're all completely un un understandable. Right? So... I get the question all the time. Well, I've, all through the years, I get the first question I get out of the audience talking to doctors. Well, what about all that use in, in, in uh, animals? What difference does it make what we do? And I say the same thing all the time. It, it's something else. It's not your thing, number one. Number two, they're both important. 
but they both need work. And that's how I, I always want to frame things. And I, I said this some years ago, quite a few years ago, actually, at a veterinary meeting in, uh, in Canada, and it, it sort of uh, stuck with John Prescott, who is uh, one of the leading uh, veterinarians on the, academic veterinarians on the file in Canada, and he has re-quoted me uh, over time, and I spoke at a, I spoke at a meeting in, uh, in, actually it was in Newfoundland this uh, last summer, the, the Summit of Veterinary Leaders, and John put this and attributed this quote to me. I was like, wow, that's cool. So I said that sometime, and I believe it. I truly believe it. So it doesn't matter if it's human use of antimicrobials or agriculture or any other use of antibiotics, the right amount is the smallest amount that does the job. It is, because the unintended consequences of all the rest, if we can use the very right amount, I have no idea how we get to the very right amount, but the resistance that follows from that, we got to eat, we got to live with it. It's part of the equation. But the resistance that comes from the stuff that isn't needed in human health or in agriculture, whatever, why would we ever want to deal with that? That doesn't make any sense. It's not economic, you know, blah, 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 blah. So the right amount is the right amount. Getting to the right amount is what leaders are trying to get to. That's what we're trying to do. So this is a minimization X, and it's weird. It's really weird because there's nothing else that we use lots of that we're really trying to get everybody to use a whole lot less of. That's an unusual kind of thing. Makes the whole the decision models very different, different and unusual and weird, and the incentives, et cetera, et cetera, all, all upside down. But that's, that's what it is. So I always get this question. Is antibiotic use in animals causing resistant antimicrobials and infections of humans? And I always answer yes. I don't know how much, I really don't. I don't, I, I believe that this is a true statement, but I'm not in any way saying it's more, I'm not saying quantity. Is antimicrobial use in animals more important than use in humans? And I always answer, absolutely not. The biggest story on the antimicrobial resistance file in human health is the use of, in humans. Without, I believe that in my heart of hearts, I have no problem standing up in front of anybody and saying that. So, but we've been musing about how you might get some trouble from using antimicrobials in animals. And this, was, this is from 1972, I think, or 74 or something. Anyway, just obviously, in Newfoundland, what we say about this sort of thing is it's right tangly. She's right tangly by it. And it is tangly. It's tangly. It's complicated. It's really hard to wrap your head around. It's like, oh my God, we can't do anything because it's too, it's too weird, too hard, too whatever. And it is. But like all things that are important, they generally are complicated. And we generally have to deconstruct them a little bit to make any traction on a given side of the story. But certainly, the use of antimicrobials in humans and animals have an interrelation with each other. I, I firmly believe that. So another principle. The people are good. The people that work in it, the people that raise animals, do doctoring, that live, that want to have their kids not be sick, and et cetera, et cetera. They're all good. The majority of them are, right? So the people are good, and they're making their decisions for whatever reasons they make them. And in fact, you know, we, both uh, in your country and mine, we're extraordinarily lucky to be in a place where we can make our own decisions mostly all the time that influence ourselves. And that's a, it's a, you know, a gigantic uh, right, or not right, a gigantic privilege, but what comes with that is that we have a tougher time deciding what's good for everybody else, right? It's, it's a harder sort of thing when we all have uh, strong feelings, and we do. And Canada is not that much different than the United States in that, in that regard. So there, what I'm saying is their uh, motivations are normal. What's normal? The motivations are all what they are. People use antibiotics, don't use antibiotics. People do whatever because they have motivations. They, you know, they, they, they want to gain personally, they want to gain for their group, they want to gain prestige, they want to, whatever. 
So they do them for all the, they're all the right reasons. So what leaders do is they influence motivations, right? So leaders, you guys are all leaders, I think. You're all leaders. So what your job in this game is, is to influence the motivations of the people that view you as a leader. And how do you do that? I don't know. That is the trick. That's the rubber meet the road story, right? That's what separates the good leaders from the leaders who don't, aren't viewed as good leaders. So that's the job. So we have to influence the motivations. So brought me to the word. What is stewardship? And why do I think stewardship is such an important word? Well, we were at the beginning of this, we were always talking about prudent use of antibiotics, prudent. And prudence is a weird word. Like, what this, what, who's prudent? Do I, do I describe myself as prudent? And then I look up prudence. No, prudent is sort of is, is right in the religious sense, right? It's, it's ab, you know, being non-sinful kind of thing. So if I'm a bad anti antibiotic prescriber, my sinning, like that didn't work for me at all. When we got on to stewardship, same sort of construct or same sort of uh, reason that I, would, I could be the steward rather than telling you to be prudent, bing, the lights went off in all kinds of places. The room started filling up, etc. Because people could wrap their heads around. Stewardship means helping a big group of people to use something that's scarce well. That's what the whole notion of, of stewardship is. We're going to help to use this thing. And remember what economics is about. I took an economics course on the weekend, this past uh, weekend. And economics isn't about money. Economics is about scarcity and distribution, right? It's about the choices one has to make between something. And this one is really weird because it appears like if we use it a lot, it gets more scarce. So the scarcity rises as you use more. And then you got even bigger difficulties with sharing up a scarce resource. So the idea behind stewardship is the right amount that gets, keeps it from being less scarce and figuring out the best way to distribute for all the people. Vaccines. If, if everybody doesn't take vaccines, nobody gets any benefit. It's, it's classic public story, right? Antibiotics are very similar. If we all use antibiotics poorly, nobody gets any benefit. It's a, that's just how it is. So stewardship is leadership. Leadership has to do with scarcity and helping people make decisions. You do this, you can't do that. You do that, you can't do this. How do you ever get there? How do you ever make these? These are too complicated. You saw that graph with the animals and the abattoir and everything all going around. Well, you can, right? But I'm going to bring you back a little bit. Just to tell you why, this is my favorite slide. I have to get it into everything I talk about, and I have to have everybody glance at this one for a while. So this is the context. And this is why we're in this room, and this is why this is different than uh, antihypertensives and, and cholesterol-lowering drugs and I mean, what other kinds of drugs that are used in, uh, animal, uh, uh, in, in food animals or other animals. It's different because of this. So I don't know how the smart people figure this out, but life started about four billion years ago. What was life? Life was bacteria or something very close to what we call a bacteria, bacterium now. So bacteria was life and everything came from there. If you, if you buy in, and as I do, that things got more and more complex over time. So everything started with bacteria and look how far you had to come around here. Can I do the pointer thing here? Just no, I can't point. Anyway, look how far he had to come around to get the mammals. <laughs> We're only like a little tiny flash on the... And if you want to put humans on there, as has been done in the little yellow thing, that's supposed to represent between two and four million years, depending on what you call a human. That's actually too big a bar to be represented here. And yeah, if you wanted to put on the antibiotic time of humans, the 70 years or so that we've been uh, feeding and eating antimicrobials, You'd have to make that circle the size of Atlanta to put it on, right? This is an enormous flash in the pan, if you will, in the big picture, the really big picture. 
again. So, am I almost done? When I, how much time do I have? I don't either. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you two more minutes. That's all I'm going to do. Two more minutes. Anyway, so that was the philosophic part, and I thought that was the important part. So in 20 minutes, but I was told I, to come here and tell you, what successes are we having in uh, stewardship in uh, human health? And we are. And after 15 years of lobbying, our act of lobbying, the accreditation body of all hospitals in Canada, it's called Accreditation Canada, very you know, clever name, made it a requirement to have an antimicrobial stewardship program in all acute care hospitals. Well, my stock has risen, I can tell you. It's risen crazily. Before, I was fighting to get in the small rooms, and now everybody's phoning, what the hell is an antibiotic stewardship program, and how do we do it, and what do we got to have, and et cetera. And the, and, the, and the accreditation people are talking to me. What do we got to have in the words on the accreditation thing so that people get the right? Well, that's a big, big difference. And what did it do? Boom. Uh, CEO, we failed our accreditation on antibiotic stewardship. What the hell is going on? Right? Bang, bang, bang. Money starts to flow. Everybody's asking what to do with it. Different game. Again, what was that? That's leadership. Leadership is finally getting it so that we can pull some uh, levers within one construct to get her going. And now it's happened. The problem for me, actually, is I'm probably a lot better at this than I am at actually doing the stuff. Right? <laughs> So now I'm responsible. I got to stand up in front of the board with the graph saying how much antibiotics used. I actually got to do it. So that's kind of freaking me out. So this was from another talk I gave at another time. But I said, what will I tell them? What will I tell a bunch of veterinarians that are getting going on trying to deal with this issue? Measure the stuff. I know it's hard. We got into a heated discussion in our small group about Denmark's veterinarians having to spend a very large proportion of their time measuring antibiotics, and they were pissed off, you know, they weren't happy about it or whatever. And I wouldn't be either, you know, without question. Um, but you can't stand up in the boardroom and go, uh, we should spend less on this. Well, how much do we spend now? I don't know. I, I don't know. It just doesn't, that's not how things work, right? So we need metrics. Now, what we do with metrics is obviously the, the job of leaders as well, but we've got to have them. And you can't influence the big decisions without metrics. So the ones to start with is the measurement of the use. Resistance is hard, hard to measure. We, gotta, we do have some re resistance measurements, but measure the use. In our case, these are the kind of measures we need, and I'll show you how far I've gotten in two years in Vancouver Island. So I was 15 years trying to measure antibiotic use in hospitals. I knew how to do it. I knew the metrics. I couldn't get it done. I couldn't get it done. How did I get it done? We hired a guy who knew how to do it <laughs> with the source information that was available. It's not perfect because the only information that we have that is completely all there electronically is the ordering information, right? The doctor says give X. That goes through a pharmacy. That, you can't get the antibiotics going until that happens. So we make assumptions about what goes into the people because we, we don't measure when it goes in, just like in animals. We don't know what goes into the pigs or the, on a given farm or the, or the cattle or whatever. But we make good assumptions. And now this is, this is you're looking at your, my dashboard to say, well, how much antibiotic are we using? And this one happens to be ciprofloxacin in oral and parenteral form at Nanaimo in standard units of use, which is defined daily doses per 100 bed days as per the World Health Organization. Well, now I can say, hey, it looks like it's going down between 2009 and... Excellent, excellent, that's good, I think that's good. Then I go back to my dashboard and I can pick off another drug and another place and another whatever. And then I put that one up. So I pick something else and I pick up uh, ciprofloxacin at uh, a different place. And it was different. Why is it different? Why was it different between this hospital and the one I just showed you? Well, that's what I got to figure out. Is it good at one place and bad at the other? Is they both good? Is it right? But now I can. And now I can express to people what I'm trying to do, what, what we're trying to get to. We can put graphical 
uh, information in front of the people that make these decisions. These are people that prescribe antibiotics, right? It's not rocket science at all, but you got to get the info. And I know I, I always get in trouble talking to this, but I just, I love Denmark so much for, for a number of reasons that I have to show you some of this stuff. So Dan Map was the original, it was kind of the prototype report of antibiotic use in animals and humans in Denmark, and a lot of people have copied it, including the CPARS report from Canada that some of you would be familiar with, which I, which I uh, help with. And this is the one. So people are always saying, well, you know, they stopped the growth promotion, but then they started calling it therapy and they're just using as much now, kind of thing. Right? Well, number one, that's not true. And number two, they can tell you how much <laughs> it is or is not. They can say how much changed and how much became therapy and whatever. Why? Because they have the information to be able to do so. So they can say that, I'm not saying that these, this is good or bad. It is a measure that's accepted by all the crowd who have an influence over it. Fair enough. So that uh, the uh, line going up there is num head of the uh, pigs. Actually, do you, would you say hogs, pigs, what, swine? What would be the term that veterinarians would use? in the United States for pigs. It depends on which uh, stage they're at. Porcine. Anyway, this is uh, porcine. This is the number of pigs, 30 million head of pigs. Denmark does 30 million. I was trying to figure out what would that be in the United States cons. The thing from, I found the pork uh, checkup document, and it, what I got out of it was 65 million pigs in the United States annually. Is that right? 115 million. Okay, so 115 million in the United States, 30 million in Denmark. There's Denmark. All I'm saying is they have to do things differently. You know what I'm getting at? They, they really do. There's small amounts of fresh water, there's whatever. They have to do things differently. It's not right or wrong. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I know when you get in the room and try to make a decision about uh, policy on antimicrobials and anything in Denmark, you get some numbers. You get to look at it. And that's where we've got to get to. We've got to have each place, British Columbia. I'm actively working at that graph I showed you to stand up in the British Columbia place now with the minister, right, and, and whoever. And we got to get some money because this is too high or whatever it is. I want to do that. That's all I want to do, actually. <laughs> I'm tired of doctrine. I'm actually, I'm actually this, this whole issue, I'm getting sort of tired of, and, you know, except when I get to come to places like this. Except when I get to come to talk to different people about, about their issues um, in, a broader, in, in a broader context.